Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 210 of the Ortho Eval Pal podcast. I'm your host, Paul Marquis, and today we're going to be interviewing David Halamakoff, the co founder and CPO of Kinotech. We are going to be talking about what Kinotech is. We'll be reviewing what the technology is like and who will be using this technology. We're going to talk about how Kinotech is different from other movement analysis systems. We'll be also talking about who is going to be in front of the Kinotech camera. We'll be talking about some of the goals of this technology, and we'll throw out some examples of some different situations evaluated with the Kinotech product and so much more. But before we get started, I'd like to just take a moment to hear a word from our sponsors. Welcome back, everyone. So before we get started today, I'd really love to give a shout out to a few folks who gave us some great reviews and some good positive feedback from Apple Podcasts. Um, and so a few of the folks here that sent some great information, we have Kara from, uh, from Vermont, we have Jordan C., Hula Hoop at 52, Smiley 5694, and Top Review 97, folks. I am completely flattered with all of the, the, the reviews. It's been absolutely phenomenal. And this is why I continue to do what I do. Um, thank you so much for this type of feedback. And um, I hope to be able to give you better content as we move forward so that um, you can continue to enjoy learning about orthopedics uh, and, and feeling more confident when you are evaluating orthopedic patients. And a lot of you, you know, go from maybe a home care setting to an orthopedic setting, or you've just been out of um, the the practice for a while and getting back into it. And um, I'm glad that we can help you kind of jumpstart that process over again. Also wanted to let you know that this year we were ranked number one in orthopedic podcasts by Feedspot. And I really could not have done it without all of you who are listening and giving all this feedback. So thank you to everybody. I really appreciate everything. So back to the show. Um, we have with us uh, our special guest, David Holomikoff, and uh, David is a biomedical engineer specializing in biomechanics and biological interfacing with instrumentation. He holds a BS and MS in biomedical engineering and as chief product officer oversees day-to-day -day operations and execution of product strategy, as well as the formation of strategic relations and partnerships. So... How's it going, David? Thank you for being on the show. <laughs> I'm doing awesome, Paul. Thank you for being here. It's definitely an honor. and I'm, I'm excited to be able to talk about uh, the Kinotech journey and, and what we're trying to do for clinicians. Awesome. So, you know, there are a lot of people out there that don't know what Kinotech is. And uh, until a year and a half, you know, a year, year and a half ago, I didn't have a clue either. Um, so why don't you Give us just the, 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 the quick and dirty breakdown on, you know, what Kinotech is and uh, describe, you know, the physical attributes of this system and how it works. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Kinotech, when you kind of strip everything away, uh, what we are is a uh, movement analysis and movement data company. And with that data, we're looking to do a lot of different things to, to help clinicians and, and patients. Um, and what it is physically uh, right now, our, our initial product that we're looking to bring to market is a camera that sits on a tripod um, that um, you plug into a laptop, um, right now a, a Windows-based laptop, and it's something where you use that camera to record the movements that um, your, your patient or your client are, are making that the active movement screens um, that you typically have them do already, uh, except the only thing you're doing differently is having them do that in front of the camera. And what our uh, camera, it's a, it's a 3D camera. So just with a single camera, you're able to get 3D information about um, how they're moving. So including um, the, um, the transverse plane, and uh, with that information, we're then able to give a 3D visualization of the way that your, your patient moved, as well as a, a report about um, uh, what their asymmetries were, if it was a bilateral movement, um, uh, yeah, how they stack up to, to normative data, um, as well as uh, we're, we're looking to do a lot of things connecting, uh, connecting all the numbers to acts of daily living and, and things that um, clients and, and patients um, can relate to. 
And so um, when I before when I said that we're a movement data company and we're looking to do things with it, um, our main goal with this data and being able to communicate is building trust. So building um, the client's trust in the clinician, um, in empowering the clinician uh, that way, as well as, you know, and I've learned from you as, as well, um, the clinician needs to build trust with uh, both referring clinicians and with uh, insurance payers uh, and insurance providers. And so uh, we're looking to affect um, trust and uh, communication um, in, in all, all of those different facets with, with all the different stakeholders that clinicians have to interact, interact with almost every day. Cool. So now you talk about providers utilizing the Kinotech system. Can you talk to me about who these providers are going to be? Are they PTs? Uh, what, what, you know, what is the scope of, of medical practice that a person is going to be utilizing this in? Yeah. So um, yeah, definitely excited to answer that. So that's something that we're still um, hashing out uh, thoroughly in real time, uh, but where the, the data seems to suggest um, based off of all of our active testers right now is that it will mostly be uh, orthopedic uh, based physical therapists or orthopedic concentrated physical therapists, as well as uh, chiropractors. Um, we have some strength and conditioning um, coaches that uh, it looks like uh, they're really excited about the, the applications as well. Um, but um, things that they're looking for um, some, sometimes seem to be a little bit out of scope. So uh, it really looks like it's going to be physical therapists and physical therapists specializing in, in orthopedics, um, as well as um, uh, chiropractors. Now, I will say that um, we're not far off from being able to work with um, neurological-based physical therapists, uh, uh, therapists that are really interested in, in gait um, and balance and, and, and all of these things. Um, but uh, the, with the product right now, um, we're, we're not, not quite there yet, but we're getting there. Yeah, I think the, the more and more I, I learn about uh, Kinotech, I'm finding that I think there's going to be a ton of applications. And I really think that if we ever do another podcast about this in the future, <laughs> as you folks get closer to launching, um, I, I, I think we're really going to have a lot more to talk about. I think this just can go in so many different directions. Now, um, you know, we've seen different types of movement analysis type programs out there in systems. What makes Kinotech different than, you know, the other players out, out in the market? Sure. So our main goal here is accessibility. So we've built the whole system from the ground up to be able to work with as many uh, laptops and computers uh, as possible, um, attempting to have the camera be really plug and play. And the reason that this is different, and it's just for maybe some of those listening that aren't familiar with some of the um, accessible 3D um, motion analysis that we're doing. Uh, typically, to, to do what we're doing, you would, you would need the clinician to purchase a $2,000 or, or $2,500 laptop um, to plug the camera into. And then for, let's say you have a, a big clinic um, with, with many clinicians and you're interested in having three or four cameras, you would then have to purchase three or four computers because you would need a designated computer for each camera. And so now you're talking about an onboarding cost of eight to $10,000. Um, whereas for us, we're looking to just work with the computers that people are already using uh, in, their, in their office. Um, and then the, uh, the other main differentiators, we're, we're really looking to focus on the, uh, the patient and the, the patient buy-in and understanding and trust aspect, not necessarily just being a very clinical uh, data tool um, by which a, uh, a patient would look at the data and not know what to make of it. Um, so, you know, a, a lot of movement tools now, they, they're, they're very clinical and, and I guess you could say mathematic in their approach, which there's not necessarily anything wrong with, but it, they they're they're kind of missing the point of um of why
why these these tools are are important are important for for better medical outcomes because you know physical therapists um, they need as much help as they could get uh, getting uh, getting patients to comply with their home exercise programs and 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 everything. Yeah, great. So it sounds like this is going to be utilized mostly with PT patients, chiropractic patients. I could definitely see. Um, you know, other people standing in front of the camera who would be maybe occupational therapy patients. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, I think we'll talk a little bit later about, you know, other applications for this, but what are the goals uh, for Kinotech? What are, what, what are they looking for long-term here in regards to um, the product and the system and how it functions and how it, it works out in the world of, you know, the medical providing? Mm. Yeah, awesome. So long term, we really want to be a connection tool for, for all of the, the major stakeholders um, within this, um, I guess you could say this movement, uh, movement clinician ecosystem. So um, we want, um, we want physical therapists to be able to use, um, use the, the information uh, all the, the objective movement data that they're getting from the 3D motion capture to um, communicate to their uh, to the referring physician or the surgeon that did the shoulder surgery or that did the knee replacement. Um, getting everyone on the same page there, automating the reporting so that it's taking uh, physical therapists less time uh, to create this documentation uh, to communicate to those different stakeholders. Um, uh, really building out a much more robust uh, communication pathway to the patients. So, um, for example, um, right now, uh, because uh, our initial product is an in-clinic tool, a lot of that communication will be done um, when uh, during that that sit-down setting, um, where uh, you can go through the information and, and communicate to to the patient um, what some of these. Uh, what some of this uh, information means and, and how treatment is going to move forward and, and what you're going to prescribe to them. Um, but very soon, we want to expand that. We want to um, have it so that uh, patients can have a patient or client accounts that they can access through their phone. Um, and they won't see the same clinical information as, as the physical therapist would uh, because you know they might not be able to understand it. But uh, showing them in, in a very specialized way, um, a little bit more of a watered down um, communication of, of what they need to be doing, uh, what their goals are, um, and eventually having, um, having that be a pipeline by which um, there's a communication, communication line from the physical therapist to the, uh, to the patient or the client. Um, so really, um, at the end of the day, um, allowing this to be a mechanism of action by which maybe you're not using the Kinotech system every day to do a movement screening or an active movement screening, but you are using it every day to uh, connect and communicate with the, the stakeholders that uh, you need to the most. Super. Now, you, you have folks out there testing it, and I happen to be one of the testers. Uh, it, and I've been doing this for like a, maybe a year, year and a half. I don't even remember how we got connected. You, do you remember how, how this happened? So I do, and you might not even remember this, but uh, John Jonathan Gagvin, who was probably our first ever, um, our first ever, I guess you could say, movement coach, uh, someone with a um, kinesiology um, uh, background, uh, masters of kinesiology, strength and conditioning certification. Um, he was the first ever movement coach um, that we started working with to kind of get a little bit better understanding. And he ended up kind of joining the the initial team. And I think he connected with you to do some customer discovery to learn about uh, what pain points clinicians have and um, how we can possibly use some of this technology to remedy some of those. And yeah. Um, from there, your name always stuck in my mind. And so as we kind of evolved and, and built out the product, um, I, uh, when we needed testers, I, I figured that you should be the one to call. And then I think I, I emailed you or um, I, I, used, uh, I used some uh, 
<laughs> I use John to to get the information to get a hold of you essentially. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, as a, as a tester, what we need to do is we need to be able to take this product and hook it up and put it to work. You know, and experiment with it and mm -hmm. and try to find what works and what doesn't work. And um, the first thing I'll tell you is that I am not the most technologically advanced human being on this earth. And, um, and I think that utilizing me is going to help you guys with a lot of pain points and frustrations because you must be thinking, well, what do you mean you don't know which button to push? Um, but, um, you know, the one thing I had to say about Kinotech and, and the team at Kinotech is that they've been extremely flexible. They've worked around my schedule. It's not me working around their schedule. They've been super patient with me because they understand how busy I am. Um, they've been totally honest and transparent. So I know everything that's happening as we're moving forward forward with this and um just to you know and they're asking me a, a ton of questions so we can get a better understanding on how to move um forward with this so i think you know number one um thank you for having asked me to do this because number one i <laughs> I, I i'm inquisitive about this stuff i love technology and uh, i really see a lot of potential for this company. You guys are so passionate about what you're doing. It's it's crazy. And the work that you're putting into it is phenomenal. And I can really see this, you know, at launch date, uh, really getting um, to a lot of rehab facilities and chiropractic facilities and helping a lot of people, not only clinicians, but patients also, you know, really, we do what we do in the medical field to help patients. That's the number one reason we get into this. And that's what we become passionate about. But if there are better ways to do it, um, then, you know, that's, that's awesome. And so, um, you know, I think that it's, it's one of those things where it takes some time to get through and to learn, but I'm starting to learn it. And I, and I'm feeling much more comfortable with it. And I actually utilized it today. I had a, uh, a lady who had come in, she's uh, 81 and she had a really bad neck, cervical arthritis and whatnot. So I, I had her sit in front of the camera. I clicked the record button. I had her do neck rotation, lateral mm -hmm. flexion, flexion and extension. And um, when I was done, the button was pressed. It gave me the exact maximum range of motions that she had for each position. So instead of me taking a goniometer and trying to get it close, this was like 42.91 degrees to the left and 22.12 degrees to the right. And it would give you the variation and, you know, uh, how symmetrical it was and whatnot. Then you can play that back for the patient and have them look at it so they get this immediate feedback on where their limitations are. So um, that was that was really fun this morning for me to be able to do it and to do it a lot faster than I usually do it. Um, so uh, really, really cool program and, and process. And I love being a tester. I hope other people jump in and uh, and do it. Um, yeah, David, do you have any questions for me? <laughs> well, that, that was, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate that, Paul. That, that was that was a great breakdown. And I think I should just kind of piggyback you and, and just uh, add a little bit of context uh, just for, for everyone listening uh, where uh, the, the current stage that Kinotech Tech is at and with our current yeah. timeline. So as, as Paul alluded to, we're, we're currently uh, in product testing mode. Uh, we're, we're not selling uh, any any products right now. We, we are a pre-revenue company. Uh, be, but we do have about 25 or 26 uh, different facilities uh, and clinics uh, across the country and uh, even a, a couple international that, that are testing out the, the product and, and giving us a lot of great feedback. Um, and uh, another thing you alluded to, Paul, which is definitely in line with a lot of the learnings we've had. So we've had a lot of learnings about how to improve the product, right? And, and um, that kind of just makes sense in general. That's why you test. But what we also have had a lot of learnings around is the onboarding and education to the clinicians and how we can be doing that so much better um, because I'll, I'll have testers that have been using it for maybe three or four weeks. They'll, they'll figure out a, a feature that I thought they already knew about and they'll get really excited and talk to me about it. And it makes me realize like, oh, wow, we could have done such a better job educating um, the use case or, you know, as you, um, you know, each clinician, right, has a workflow and, you know, within Kinotech, we call that the user journey, right? So um, for, 
you know, in an in initial examination, that 45 to one hour user journey, the clinician typically goes through their process and understanding how we could communicate to them uh, through each, you know, part of the process, whether it's uh, sitting down and getting that initial subjective evaluation, how Kinotech can possibly uh, be part of that process, or we can give the clinician information to prompt the, the patient about what's going to happen with the camera and how it works and why it's important um, to the actually objective, um, to the assessment, and then to the documentation. Um, being able to better communicate to them all the different things um, within the software that we're trying to do um, to help them out in all those different areas, um, because um, it's it's not it's not something that you know you just stumble upon organically sometimes. So that's definitely been uh, a really great learning from us, and we're we're still learning um, and trying to get better there. Um, one cool fact uh, for for everyone listening is. We did just get uh, 50 new cameras in. Um, so we are looking to expand testing. Um, so maybe at some point in the, um, the podcast, Paul, we can kind of give some uh, contact information to everyone so, so that they could reach out and yeah. um, look us up and uh, get in contact, even just about a demo to learn more. Maybe you don't wanna be a tester, but you're really interested. Um, and uh, we're really excited to, to talk to everyone and. Like I said, learn from as many uh, clinicians as possible. Yeah, I mean, I, I figure if, if I can learn how to do this, and I'm 51 years old and really not uh, don't have a lot of technology uh, in in my uh, tool chest. Um, I, you, you younger therapists and practitioners, I'm sure, will do a lot better than I will learning and uh, progressing with this. I, I think the thing that's helped me a lot is that I've kind of grown with the tool. And um, as I look forward, the thing that excites me or the things that excite me the most are, you know, I'm very, very busy, as you know, David, uh, you know, we've yeah. had times where mm -hmm. we're like, oh, can we connect today? And I'm like, nope, not at all. It's, it's not going to happen. <laughs> you know, I'm going top to bottom from, you know, seven till four. And uh, I think one week I did. I didn't eat lunch for three days. Uh, and, and so it gets kind of crazy. So in the future, you know, I'm busy. I want, I want to be able to be more efficient with my evaluations, not spend so much time taking individual measurements. So like this morning with the lady that I saw, I want to be able to sit her in front of the camera, just like you would when you go to the optometrist, you know, the, the optometrist doesn't even see you to start with. It's, it's sometimes it's a tech or an MA and they take you through a couple of tests. They put the little puff in your eye and they have you, they take a look at your, you know, color blindness and can you sort things out first and get the initial triage done. And that's kind of what I envision for, for me utilizing the Kinotech product is, can we get this patient triaged maybe with a, an assistant, a PT assistant or OT assistant, and get that initial, sit in front of the camera and let the patient know that this is, you know, like when I do videos on YouTube, um, we have to have them sign all kinds of paperwork, you know, just making sure that it's okay to utilize their image and whatnot. And, and there are some legal issues to that. The nice thing about the Kinotech tool is that when it sends you the image back, it puts it on another body um, that shows you which muscles are working and not working. And it shows you the asymmetries, but it really doesn't show you the picture of the patient, the actual patient. So that's kind of cool that it keeps it confidential in that way. So I like that. I like the fact that we can, we can put the patient right next to you and utilize the tool as, as an educational tool. So they have that instant feedback on why we're doing what we're doing. And then ultimately, what I think would be really ideal is, you know, can you turn this objective information that is very, very specific and put it into a chart form or maybe superimpose um, two videos on top of each other before and after or um, day one and week two? and show progress and take that snippet, send it to the insurance company and say, this is where we're at. We're improving. We're continuing to do better. We're not hundred percent of the way there, but here is some actual physical data that you can visualize and see really quickly and understand and know that we are doing the right thing. Okay. And I, I think that's kind of, for me, something that could be very helpful. The other aspect that I'm looking for is we do a lot of pre-employment screenings and ergonomic evaluations, and we talk about movement and proper body mechanics and things like that. I think this would be a, a nice little 
teaching tool in that sense. I think that we could assess workplaces and movement patterns of people while they're working and then show this back to them and say, this is why we would like you to change what you're doing. Okay. So not just telling them because they don't want to hear it, but if you explain to a person why they need to do what they do, they're more apt to be compliant. And if we can improve mm -hmm. compliance and people will be more engaged to help themselves out and ultimately get better faster. And I think that we could really show these, you know, rates of improvement a lot better with, with good tools like this. And I think that as it, it, it continues to evolve, um, it will get better and better and better. But right now I'm super impressed that I can take somebody, stand them in front of a camera and do a straight up shoulder flexion and take a look at it from a 360 degree view without even moving the camera, um, which is super amazing. So uh, I think definitely, you know, heading in the right direction. You guys have some sort of a launch date or a prediction on when you think <laughs> this will be getting out to the world and in yeah, people's hands? Yeah. yeah so uh, right now we're, we're looking towards uh, March 31st uh, as, as our kind of our, our soft launch date, uh, what we're targeting, targeting internally. Um, now that's March thirty first of two thousand and twenty two. Yes, that's just right. for those that's, of you who may not be listening to this podcast today, or or you know um, when yeah, we, when we are recording, uh, if you listen <laughs> to it a year later, then you'll that you know that'll put it into perspective. Yeah, no, th thank you for the, that that extra context, Paul. Yeah, so um, so uh, March thirty first, twenty twenty two is is currently uh, what we're shooting for, um, but um, really with our testing, you know if for whatever reason, we have learnings uh, where we can't hit that mark, uh, that's okay. Um, because um, what we're going to be able to do is understand why that, that date is unattainable and what uh, barriers um, clinicians still have um, that we are not, you know, um, we're not taking care of on, on our end. Like, so for even some, an example, Paul, you, you even brought it up. And it's something that we've learned from other uh, testers and that we're now working to do a better job of, of uh, how do we even more clearly communicate the improvement that happened from the initial evaluation to where they are today? And not only how does that most effectively get communicated to whoever is you know, putting the stamp on insurance reimbursement, but how does that most effectively get uh, communicated to the client and the patient because maybe those are two different things or maybe they're the same. Um, so, um, uh, like I said, that that's something that we're working on, and we wouldn't have known uh, to work on it a, a lot more if, if we weren't um, uh, talking and, and testing with with clinicians every day. Um, that's the one of the coolest parts of my job is at, every single day I, I talk to at least two clinicians um, and. Uh, Growing up as a as a biomedical engineer that was always obsessed with anatomy and kinesiology, um, it's just been you know fantastic to to learn about that world. Um, the last kind of bit of context I'll give is um, for everyone listening. We we keep bringing up the the three D visualization, and so the best way to imagine that in your head is uh, it's essentially a video game. It's it's almost a video game three D avatar. And it's a musculoskeletal model. So it's a skeleton that has all of the anatomical muscles uh, of the human body on it. And it will move through an animation uh, exactly how, uh, your, um, how your patient moved uh, through 3D space when you took the recording. Uh, and there's, a, there's some extra goodies on top of that 3D model um, that we're hoping to learn a little bit more about in terms of uh, how effective they could be at educating um, clients um, through the clinician's guidance. So trying to um, create almost a new educational modality that clinicians have never had before, where you, know, you no longer have to take out your, your, your textbook um, to show them pictures, or you don't have to take out you know, the polymer skeleton with the different you know, plastic muscles attached to it. Um, you could possibly, uh, and this is our, our hope and our goal, use the 3D model of them actually moving um, and the muscles will change color depending on whether they're lengthening or shortening based off of that person's 3D position. Um, and from there, um, we're, we're hoping uh, if they're 
per perhaps the um, clinician is starting to suspect some soft tissue issues where um, maybe a, a muscle is either over lengthened and too weak or maybe too tight and too short and is constricting uh, range of motion and causing pain in a joint. Um, you could point to that uh, during the movement and say, hey, see, during this movement, like when you bend over to pick up a laundry basket, these muscles are supposed to lengthen when you do that. However, yours aren't able to do that because of X, Y, or Z. And so what we, we need to really do is work on that. And so that's just kind of one of many, many different examples. And sometimes I, I feel a little awkward giving clinical examples, not being a clinician, um, but, um, but that, that's the 3D visualization. Um, and I think we're kind of just scratching the surface of what we can do with it in terms of communication and, and providing that, that understanding and context. And clinicians are definitely helping us out uh, understand that too. Cool. So if somebody wanted to get in touch with, uh, with you or uh, with the folks at Kinotech, um, what is the best way to get in touch if they had questions about Kinotech or if they wanted to become a tester? Yeah, so fantastic. So um, two emails um, that are probably best uh, is either my personal email, uh, which is uh, david at kinotech.com. Um, spelt uh, K-I-N-O-T-E-K, uh, or um, contact at kinotech.com. Uh, those are the, the two best uh, ways to get a hold of someone um, that um, to set up a demo uh, or to uh, set up just a, just a, a conversation uh, to, to learn more. Um, and uh, they could also visit our website, of course, uh, just www.kinotech.com. Um, we, we just revamped the website to be a little bit more clear, uh, uh, communicating um, you know, our, our goals and, and getting, getting clinicians um, to kind of understand immediately uh, what, what we're trying to do with this and, and, and why we think we can help out. Um, could, because obviously, you know, as you know, Paul, um, technology isn't, you know, as widely distributed through physical therapy and chiropractic and movement clinicians, you know, as, um, you know, as you thought it would be, you know, by this time, 2021. So sometimes it's, it's very easy to, um, communicate, uh, or communicate like inaccurately to clinicians uh, what's going on or, or why we exist and what we're trying to do. Um, and because we're not trying to replace the physical therapist with artificial intelligence or technology or a computer. Um, what we're trying to do is, is add a, a brand new tool to the tool belt um, and a really potent one, uh, one of communication and trust. And uh, we wanna kind of expand uh, those tools as we move forward as a company um, into more and more uh, modes of, of communication, uh, measurement, uh, and, and uh, trust. Well, David, uh, thank you so much for all this information. For those of you listening, I'm going to put David's information and contact information in the show notes. So you can just click on that and go. And uh, if you can't get through to him that way, just get in touch with me. Uh, you all know how to do that. And um, again, Thanks for telling us all about Kinotech, uh, where Kinotech is headed. We're definitely going to do another show to update you as we get a little bit closer and uh, really appreciate you being on the show with us. Oh, thank you, Paul. It's like I said, it, it's an honor to, to be on this show with you. Um, and I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to, to giving, uh, giving everyone updates, uh, you know, a, a couple of months from now. Um, and I'm really looking forward to see uh, how many people reach out um, because um, I'm really excited to, to talk to each and every one of you uh, and uh, definitely don't hesitate. Um, like I said, even if it's an open-ended conversation, just to learn a little bit more, maybe you're not interested in being a tester. Maybe you're not even interested in ever being a customer. Um, being able to just communicate and, and network uh, within the community is really important to us and it's important to me. 
So super, super. Well, folks, thank you so much for listening today. Don't forget to send us your questions for the show. Check us out on YouTube and take a tour of our website. Um, and make sure you go over to Apple Podcasts and give us a rating and review because that really helps us modify our show and make it better for everybody. And if you do that, I will uh, give you a shout out on the show. So folks, stay safe, be kind to one another and take care. Mm-hmm.